when solving a linear first order recurrence relation like this one here, the bit that seems to be scaring people is finding the particular solution and which form to plug in. This is the table that's given in the textbook that suggests which forms to plug in. I think this table looks a little bit scary and we can't really learn it just from this table. We need some examples and to just try a load ourselves in order to get used to it. I've written out some examples here, uh, putting some numbers to these symbols. So if the function on the end is just a constant, then we try plugging in a constant. That makes sense. If the function on the end is linear, we try plugging in a linear thing. Okay. When the function on the end is a power of n, or something to the power of n, I mean, then we try something to the power of n. Okay. Now here's the danger one. If it's something to the power of n, and that something is the same as what's in front of the term here, then we need to shove an n in there. We'll get used to that a little, more, a little bit more when doing second order occurrence relations. It seems when there's a danger one and it doesn't work, we shove an n in there. That's, that's something to remember. Just have a look at these, maybe pause the video and have a good look at them to make sure that they make sense in your own head. Okay, what I'm going to do now is focus on this one. But I'm going to show you what happens when you make an incorrect guess to the particular solution. Here it is again. But instead of trying something linear, say I have a freak out in an exam and I try, oh, I'm going to guess un equals just a constant. Let's try that. Let's plug it in and see what happens. So if un is a constant, then un minus one is going to be the same constant. Let's plug those in and we get, so zero equals lambda plus three n plus four. Remember that this needs to work for every single value of n. It really needs to be an identity. Does this work for every single value of n? No, well if, if lambda's a constant, if we rearrange this, we get minus lambda, n equals minus lambda minus four over three. It definitely doesn't work for every single value of n. It just works for this value here. Okay, we screwed up. This one was wrong. Not to worry though, what we do is how do I find an eraser on this thing? There we go. Delete it all and just start again. We put a line through it and we try something else. It's not the end of the world. Okay. Let's try something else slightly wrong. I'm gonna try, I'm seeing this linear thing and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm gonna try a quadratic an squared plus bn plus c. Let's see how this works out. Now this is going to be a trudge through some algebra, so I'm just going to try and do it. We need to plug the un into the left-hand side and this into there. So there we go. Un is this and un minus one is that there. Okay, let's tidy this up a little bit. I want to do some expanding on the right-hand side. Okay, I've expanded the right-hand side. Now I'm going to gather all of the powers of n together, so all of the n squareds, all of the n's, and all the constants separately. All right, I've gathered together all of the different powers of n, um, and we remember that this needs to work for every single value of n. It's an identity, so we're allowed to equate coefficients. We get how many n squares are over here? There's minus a, how many n squares are over here? There's none of them. So we get a equals zero. Then this gives us that b is minus three. 
And this last one will give us... Two minus ten. So in this case, our particular solution becomes a is zero, and we just get a linear thing. So in making this mistake, in assuming that it's quadratic, it's just the maths has worked for us, and a has turned out to be zero. It's told us that it's not actually a quadratic. That's really nice. It's quite a lot of wasted effort, but it has worked. The point of me showing, those, showing you those two mistakes is to try and show you that it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake with it. And sometimes it just works out anyway. The best way to get your head around these is to just do a few. I'm going to leave that to you to do now. Maybe you try to solve these other three and maybe make some deliberate mistakes on the way.